Hi everyone, I'm Paul with Madcap Software and we are on a video in our series on source control talking about branching and this video has to do with what is called Git flow and branching. So this is all about having a plan, a master plan going forward as you're using branching. It's a just it's this map for you to follow. This isn't something that I came up with, GitFlow, not at all. Uh, some somebody named Vincent Dreesen, he came up with this, and it was it's just brilliant, a uh, brilliant way to think about branching and with Git. And uh, my uh, one of our developers uh, learned it, and then he taught it to me, and so I um, incorporated it into the documentation processes and tweaked it just a little bit. So this whole video is going to be me talking through a bunch of graphics. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how this works and just talk through it. Um, and then later in the next couple of videos, when we get into the actual tasks in, in Flare and doing the branching, I'll refer back to these things. So for right now, you just kind of want to understand the model, this GitFlow model. Uh, the plan, and then and then um, and then we'll we'll repeat it in the next couple of videos. So, all right, let's hop in and uh, start looking through this. Okay, so this is just uh, an image uh, that shows begins to show what we're talking about with Git flow. So, starting over here on the left, you have this of uh, arrow going down and this just represents time. So we're starting at the top, working our way down. Now, even if you're not using branching, you're using branching in Git because um, you're all, you always have what's called the master branch. So even if you didn't realize it, you're working away on a master branch. So you start out with that, but you have the option of creating lots of other branches if you want. So with GitFlow, the way to think about the master branch, your original branch, the main one, this master branch, the way to think about it is uh, think about the, the documentation in the world of documentation. Think about what you have published that's out there, that's available for your audience to see. So uh, if you're doing version software, an easy way to think about this is think of the master branch as this is version one, this blue dot. Okay. So all these branches I have color coded depending on what the kind of branch it is. So this is version one and it's out there. It's published. It's just everybody can consume it. All right. So you're not going to really be working directly in your master branch. That's the way this model is designed. You're going to be doing the work in other branches. And so the first thing that you do is you create a new branch. When you create a new branch, you're doing it based on an existing branch. It doesn't have to be the master branch, but in this, in this model, that's what we're doing. We're creating our first branch and we're naming it release. And release is represented by the green. Okay. So it starts out as an exact you know, replica of what the master branch is. And what does release mean? Well, release, if master branch means the, the version of the documentation that's out there, that's already published, release is what's coming next. So if this is version one, this is version two right now, okay? So you have the release branch. Then based on the release branch, you can create multiple other, what are called feature branches. So in this example, I've got feature one, feature two, feature three. In the real world, I will name these features after the actual, the, the, I will name these branches after the actual feature. So if you look back over time with our Flare releases, we have, let's say, micro content. Micro content was the name of a, of a branch. Another one for Flare was a style inspector that we had some time ago. So style inspector would have been the name of another one. And feature three would have been something else. But <clears throat> to keep things simple, I'm just going to call these feature one, feature two, feature three. So I'm creating new branches for each one of these based on the release branch, which starts out as a copy. You know, it's the same thing as the master branch. These are all, these feature branches are orange in 
this example. All right, so create each one of these branches. And then what happens is you're, you, you also want to keep in mind you have, remember, your local repository for Git and your remote repository. So actually, let me go back here. When you have a branch, not only do you want to create it, but you want to publish it. You want to push it from the local repository up to the remote one. So you've got the release branch locally, but it's also up there remotely. Feature one, feature two, feature three. You have each one of these locally, but they're published, they're pushed up remotely, all right? So let's say you got these branches and you just wanna work on something. You wanna work on feature one. So what you do is you just switch to that branch in, in Flare and in the coming videos, you'll see how you do this. It's super, super easy. And you're just working in that branch. And what you do when you begin working, remember the, the process, you pull, you commit, you push or synchronize. So you begin by pulling, you, you switch to that branch, feature one branch, and you pull from the remote branch because some other writer might've been making changes up there. So you do that, you, you do that pull, you're working away, you're making your changes just as you usually do. And then you, at some point you go, okay, I've made a bunch of changes. I wanna do a commit or multiple commits. So you do your commits and you push or you synchronize up to the, so you push it up to the remote branch from the local branch. So you're keeping these things synchronized and that's just how you're working. Same thing as what I showed you in the previous videos for working with source control, doing these, uh, doing the main processes. It's just that you're doing it while you're in a specific branch. Okay, so time is going by. Got our master branch, release branch. <clears throat> and now you're starting to see multiple dots in here. These are just re representing the work as you're going commits. You're, you're making lots of changes over time, doing commits. The next day you're doing lots of changes, making commits, pushing them. You know, you're, all, of the, all of this work is just being done outside of these other branches, all right? They're just separate. Then at some point, you decide, okay, feature one is definitely going to go in the next release. It's definitely going to go. And so you do a merge. That's what it's called. You merge your feature one branch into the release branch. And you push it. You push that up to remote to it when you do, after you do this merge. So how do you decide when you want to do this? Well, each company is different. So our developers at Madcap Software, they, they use the same Gitflow system that I use. And so they have their master branch, they have their release branch, they have all their feature branches. And of course, just like other companies, we'll have meetings and decide, all right, what's going to go in the next release? And we think we know, and things change over time. But after a while, it solidifies, and we know this is going to go into this release. Well, what I do is I wait until our developers merge their stuff from there because they're working in an entirely different system, developing the software. I wait until they say, hey, we're merging, we, or we just merged feature one into our release branch. And that is the signal for me to do the same with my documentation. I'll merge my feature one branch into my release branch. And I do that because I know that there's a 99.9% .9 chance it's not gonna get backed out because they're not gonna wanna back, back out their changes. There's a lot of people involved in this, QA and developers and, so I have a really good feeling. I don't want to do this prematurely because somebody might go, oh, well, we just we found some problems and it got backed out. But by the time they merge things into the release branch, it's pretty solid. It's going. So that's what happens. Merge this branch from feature one into release and do a push. Then what happens? So I've got a commit down here. because So when I did that merge, that was a commit. And so I got another green dot down here with this um, on this branch, on the release branch. And then what I do is I will continuously be merging things from the release branch 
into these other branches that are ongoing because I wanna keep them up to date. Now they're getting the changes from feature one because it's definitely going. So everything is just kind of staying current as I'm doing this. And I actually, this is a daily process that I'll do uh, or almost daily merging things in here because I want things just to be up to date. All right, so then what's next? Gonna throw a wrench into this thing. You're seeing this new branch way over here called develop. And it's got kind of got this bluish dot down here. Now, this is something that I do that you definitely do not need to do. And if this confuses you, just forget. <laughs> I'll wipe it from your memory banks, what I'm about to tell you. So uh, I create this extra branch called develop. And this is, it's almost sort of like a, a sandbox where I can take, uh, I can merge commits, merge changes from all of these other branches, release and all the other features, even if these features aren't in release yet, and they go into this develop branch. And that way, all of these features that are in development are together in this one place uh, so that I, uh, you, can see, you can see it all at the same time. Now, I because this is sort of a sandbox and it can get it can get messy with all this stuff that's under in, in development. I never merge develop branch into any other branch. Never. It's it's got its own purpose. The main reason why I have this develop branch, I go back to Madcap Central. And I said that Madcap Central will support branching for things like builds and sites for publishing and for topic reviews. One of the things that it doesn't yet support branching for is checklists. And I use checklists a lot. So it helps me keep track of all the things that I got to do for all these files for a particular release. And But I need the checklist to be based on documentation that's in development, not on the master branch, stuff that's already done. I need it to be for this stuff. And so I have this workaround because Central doesn't support branching for a checklist. What I do is I will have this other branch and then I use what's called global project linking. And I have an entire video on global project linking if you want to look at that. So I have a child project and that child project is getting the files from this branch right here. And then that separate child project is, is uh, connected to, it's bound to Madcap Central. And so, but when I'm pushing things up from that child project, I'm doing it from that project's master branch. Okay. Even though it's the, it's this stuff from here. So it's, it's a separate project. It's a child project. And that is allowing me to use checklists. That's, that may be more than you want to know, but I just wanted to let you know that, look, even though th this Git flow model is got, you know, it, it's, it's uh, pretty standard, these things that you're doing, you do have the flexibility to, you know, create other things like this develop branch if it helps you. But if, you're, if, it, if your brain is swimming from hearing that, you're not sure, just don't worry about it. But over time, you might find that you create other branches that aren't just, you know, like what these things are. By the way, all of these examples in here, feature one, feature two, feature three. So I, I'm thinking of these as, again, these software product features, and each branch is based on that. But I will have branches, you know, I'll call them feature branches, but they're not really based on a feature. It might just be things that I want to do for the documentation. Maybe I want to rearrange some snippet files, uh, put in some subfolders and move things around, but it doesn't have to do with any of these feature branches. So I'll have an extra branch. Maybe I'll call it reorganize snippets. And so I'm doing that work separately in that branch as well. Just want to let you know that. All right, moving forward. So now we've got all these branches in here, the master branch, release, all these feature branches. And I actually added a couple more, feature four, feature five, because at some point those came along. It's like, yeah, I need, I need branches for those too. So let's look and you can see all the commits that are happening, all the activity that's happening. Well, feature one, 
I already merged that into my release branch at some point. That's done. Come down here, feature two at some point, I decided, yeah, that one's ready. I merged that one into release. And then also feature three, that got merged into the release branch. So the decision was feature one, feature two, feature three. Yeah, those are gonna go into the next release, definitely. Okay, cool. So at that point, I am also, I'm continuing to merge from my release branch back into these other branches that aren't yet part of that, that next release cycle. So feature four, four, feature five. Now they've got all the changes. They've got all the changes from feature one, feature two, feature three. They're going back into those. And now we've decided feature one, feature two, feature three. Those are the only things going into this version two release. Cool. We're that day where we're releasing the product. And so I merge the release branch into my master branch. So now I have version two. So this is version one up here. Now we're at version two. Done. And then it just continues. The, you know, as time goes by, I'm going to get more and more uh, feature branches and just work on them. And the, the merging continues, right? And as I create these new feature branches, I'm creating them based, I usually create them based on the uh, on, on the release branch. The other thing that happens is um, you might want to, after a product release and you're done with these feature branches, you might want to delete them. I do. I'm one of those people, I don't like clutter. Um, I'm the opposite of the people that you see on the, the Hoarders TV shows. I, I like to throw things away, and, but I, won't, I don't wanna do it until I'm absolutely sure, sure, till after these things are no longer needed, after we've released, I'll get rid of feature one, feature two, feature three. I'll get rid of them both locally and remotely. And it's just cleaner going forward. All right, so that in essence is it. That's, that's Gitflow, that is the plan that I follow all the time. And so um, it may not, the first time hearing that, it might be a little bit much. You might, might need to go through it again and again. And it helps when you actually go into the software and you start doing these things and then it, and then it clicks, just like anything else that seems overwhelming at first, but then it clicks. And now it's just sort of, um, you know, I don't, I don't think about it anymore. It's just how, how, how it works. And it worked really good. It's, it's very, very smooth. All right, so there you have it. There you've got GetFlow. Now, the next couple of videos, the next one, we're going to go into the main things that you're doing with branching, refer back to this GitFlow plan, and then after that, we'll get into some extra things you, you do for branching. All right, so we'll see you in the next videos.